Oh boy, I've done it now, haven't I? This might actually be the ranking list to finally do me in. So I've been quoted in the past as saying that the only thing consistent about Twisted Metal is its inconsistency, and I still stand by that. However, there are a few aspects of the games that have had solid staples from day one, none more iconic than the special attack. An attack that automatically regenerates and is unique for every character, usually. So I thought I'd rank them, however I overlooked the fact that there's a lot of crossover between certain special attacks. In some cases, it's gonna be hard to know where one special attack ends and another begins, and which ones will get grouped together, and in many instances, characters have multiple specials, making this a very complicated list. So what's the solution? Well, there is none. This is gonna be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. All I can do is my best, so this is every Twisted Metal special attack ranked from worst to best. As usual, I'll be flying by the seat of my pants as far as how I'm going to be ranking these, but the factors we're going to be taking into account include ease of use, iconic status, spectacle, uniqueness in both application and in design, and of course, balance. We want these things to be powerful, but not overpowered. Because we want them to be fun to use on other characters, but not frustrating to be hit with. But most importantly of all, I'm going to be ranking these based on the subjective amount of fun they are to use. So remember, you can't get mad because it's subjective. Oh, by the way, I should mention that in some of these games I am using cheats just to increase the amount of specials that I get, just for expediency's sake so I can get footage of these specials quicker. It doesn't play into my rankings whatsoever. So without further ado, let's get started. I'll just put this here because there are a few special attacks that, try as I might, I could not find a way to access. Either no combination of Game Shark codes would work, or maybe the specific character was completely inaccessible. But either way, this is a blanket entry for every character whose special attack I couldn't access through Hell or High Water. So if there are any characters on this list you think are missing, like Darktooth's head or Warhawk, just consider them categorized under this entry. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I've always said that Twisted Metal 2012 tends to be the monkey wrench in any sort of discussion with the overall series because it's such a different beast compared to the rest of the games. I thought that wasn't going to be the case with the special attacks, but it ended up being the case, mostly because every car in this game has two special attacks, and a few of them even have three. It's to the point that I have a hard time even calling to mind specific cars doing specific attacks because of this quantity over quality mindset. Like, what was the one where you had to hold the fire button three separate times to maximize damage? I can't remember off the top of my head. But Juggernaut is a very easy car to remember because it's a giant tractor trailer and the lesser of its special attacks and the worst special attack in the series officially is definitely the machine guns. Because the idea is Juggernaut opens up its back end and cars can drive in and mount machine guns to do exponential damage. But the problem is this attack relies upon allied vehicles driving up your back end, something that doesn't happen if you're playing single player. And that's why it places dead last, because unless you're playing co-op, this attack is completely and literally useless. And as a matter of fact, if somebody fires up your back end while it's open, it actually does more damage than it would otherwise, making it a liability in single player. It's a shame because the idea of having to work in tandem with other players is a fun one, but that's contingent on people actually working with you. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Sweet Tooth's special attack in Twisted Metal 4 called Henchman is absolute bullshit. I've gone over this a million times, but it traps you, it freezes you, and it does basically consistent damage until you die. And this is in a game where every character has far too much health. So just imagine the ground that covers. In most instances, a single one of these attacks can drain your entire health bar, and the only way to get out of it is to use the hyperspace code up, up, down, down. Even then, it's not a guarantee that it'll get you to safety, and if you run out of energy, you're screwed. It's spectacular, it's unique, and it's instantly recognizable, but it's so ungodly overpowered that it goes right over the edge and becomes one of the worst special attacks in the series. 
It's so frustrating to be hit with that any fun that could be gleamed from using it on someone else is null and void. It's the type of unbalanced attack that would be banned in a competitive tournament, so screw henchmen. Hopefully I never have to talk about it again. As much as I would have loved to group Firestarter's Flamethrower or Torch with the other flamethrowers in the series, unfortunately I couldn't because it is demonstrably worse than other flamethrower attacks in the other games. You know how it works, he launches flames out the front of his car, igniting anyone nearby. However, the duration of the flamethrower, as well as the range, is far too short then it doesn't do enough damage to justify either of these issues, and also, if you accidentally bump into the person you're using the attack on, which is very likely because you're driving in their direction, you're likely to light yourself on fire, which will do damage to yourself. It's a paradoxically useless version of a weapon that has always traditionally been pretty useful. They managed to ruin the flamethrower, which is like ruining water. Road Kill's special in Twisted Metal 3 is... useless. It acts much like the Mortar attack. Now here's something you should know. I really don't like the Mortar. This has never come up, but it's relevant. It does decent damage, but it's damn near impossible to use because it has a set distance that it travels, and also the auto-tracking is finicky at best. And Roadkill's special is basically that. He launches a theoretically red-hot bit of scrap metal that arcs into the air and then explodes on impact. But if you're not a very specific distance from your opponents, it will whiff almost every time. You may say that means it takes skill to use, but it also semi-auto tracks, meaning that there's no predictability for the exact direction or destination it will travel. It's entirely up to luck, so this is a terrible special attack. Avoid it like the plague. I think that Twisted Metal 2012's problem when it comes to special attacks is that most of them are one of two things. Either it's a case of them being too basic, or they get too cute and gimmicky. Reaper's RPG attack is the latter. Big time. You pause where you stand and have to manually aim an RPG, which is a pain in the ass in the heat of battle, and will almost always get interrupted. Even if you do hit it, it doesn't do nearly enough damage to justify the amount of effort it takes to aim the thing in the middle of a crowded battlefield. I only managed to actually hit somebody with it, like, once or twice, so there's absolutely no reason to use the RPG attack in this game, and I will not hear anything different. It's a gimmick that gets in the way of the action instead of adding to it. The worst thing a gimmick can do. Alright, so one thing you're going to be hearing a lot on this list is that the first Twisted Metal game had very unspectacular special attacks. In my opinion, this is mostly down to the game itself being very primitive and low budget compared to the rest of the series, and without having previous precedent, the ideas probably weren't flowing as much as they were in later entries. So a lot of special attacks in the first game are very basic, so what it comes down to is just how useful they are. And the wooden spoon in this case goes to the ironically named Death Blast belonging to Darkseid. It's a small, nondescript laser that does a tiny bit of damage and nothing else. No status effects, it doesn't even have the power to launch an enemy into the air, it's just a laser. A laser with a hitbox so tiny that it's a pain in the ass to even land, even though they do respawn quickly. Darkseid itself is a pretty useful vehicle in that ramming an enemy to death is super easy, making this attack almost pointless. As a matter of fact, half the time I was using this attack, I accidentally rammed into my opponent, doing significantly more damage. But with that said, the PC version does also freeze the enemy, which makes them susceptible to ramming, but given how hard the PC version is to obtain, I'm not even sure if I should count that. Either way, this is a borderline useless attack, even by the standards of the first game, making it one of the worst in the series. Crimson Fury's Crimson Blade in the first game is a lot like Darkseid's Death Blast, in fact it's almost identical. It's a small laser that you shoot forward and it does very little damage, but it does have a few notable additions. First of all, it launches your opponent into the air. It's not much, but at least it makes it feel slightly more impactful. 
Second, it does a slight bit more damage, which makes sense. Crimson Fury has less health, better balance it out with a higher damage output. And third, it makes this cool sound. So what's the problem? Well, aside from being the Death Blast, but slightly less shit, Crimson Fury really needed an auto-tracking weapon because as a character, Crimson Fury is so quick and so hard to control at times that accurately landing a laser attack is a pain in the ass to the point of making it basically useless. Especially when the hitbox and sprite is as small as this one. If it weren't for that sound effect, I could barely tell that I shot it. So yeah, this is marginally better than Darkseid's laser, but it's still awful. There are many things in this world I don't understand. Quantum mechanics, people who hate those who are different to them, the continued popularity of the Kardashians. But one thing I don't get is why developers would have something that is fully programmed and working in a game and then not let the players use it. Such as in the case of Darkseid and Primeval from Twisted Metal 3. You have to jump through some hoops with GameShark to access them, but once that's all sorted out, they're perfectly playable. So why weren't they included as playable characters? Who knows. Either way, the lesser of these bosses special attacks is definitely Darkseid's. It's called Freeze Flamethrower, how creative, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Darkseid freezes you and then fires off a flamethrower, essentially leaving you helpless. It's not a bad attack in theory, but it's basically just slapping on extra bits to an attack that already exists, belongs to a completely different character, and already sucks. You can recreate this attack by playing as Firestarter, firing a freeze missile, and using his special attack at the same time. But you're also mixing short and long-ranged attacks, which means the attack is pretty hard to use optimally. Even worse is that once again, half the time I used this flamethrower, I inadvertently bumped into the enemy that I was using it on and lit myself on fire. So for a lack of originality and anything that could be associated with Darkseid as a character, and for the fact that it's basically a liability, this attack blows. The only reason this places above Firestarter's attack is that at least it gives you a free freeze blast. <laughs> So the ATV Shotgun Blast and Head-On is counterintuitively one of the most useless attacks in the series. Despite ATV being to my knowledge the character with the least amount of health in the entire series, his Shotgun Blast is very hard to use. It does a decent amount of damage if you manage to hit someone with it head-on, but it has very little spread so it's hard to hit, and if you go anywhere near someone else they'll probably take off half your health bar as it is. ATV needed a longer ranged attack or something that had a lot of spread and did a good amount of damage to compensate for his low health. It basically means that unless you get the upgraded version of ATV's special attack, he's essentially useless, and even then, he's not exactly useful. Yet again, this is a case of the boys over at Eat Sleep Play getting a little bit too cute. Vermin from 2012's secondary special attack is called the Piloted Rat Rocket, where you can manually pilot a missile into your opponents, which does significantly more damage than the regular attack, but the controls are so finicky in this little mini mode that it's nearly impossible to hit a moving target. And you can still be damaged while you're piloting the missile, so it's really not worth it, especially considering it's very easy to miss. This is a case where I only hit the target once or twice, and considering how relentless the AI is in 2012, you don't want to leave yourself open, even for a second. So I suppose by the time that Twisted Metal Black rolled around, they were kind of sick of having Axel have the same special attack over and over. So they decided to give him a secondary special attack called Encasement Rage. You press up three times and he curls into a ball. Problem is, this attack is borderline useless from my experiences. The idea is, you're supposed to ram into people, which will do a severe amount of damage, but Axel doesn't stay in his encasement for nearly long enough for me to do anything with it, so 90% of the time I wasted a special on this. And even then, you're supposed to ram into people, but half the time I managed to do that, I wasn't sure if I rammed into them properly, or maybe I just wasn't going fast enough. So either way, I wasn't even sure if I was damaging anyone 
one were using the attack properly. It really was an attack that needed extra audio-visual feedback to make the most of it. Make it clear that I'm doing the right thing. So despite being an attack that only Axel could do, Encasement Rage really dropped the ball. Twelve Pack is the lone new character included in Twisted Metal Lost, and obviously there was a major issue that they faced, because given that this game is a glorified demo, they probably weren't going to go out of their way to program some big unique weapon for a character exclusive to that game. So they decided to give him what's called the reticle. A missile weapon that counts down, and the longer you have an opponent in your sights before firing, the more missiles that will fire and auto-track to them. It's actually a pretty useful weapon that does a decent amount of damage. Unfortunately, it loses almost all of its points because this was a standard weapon pickup in Twisted Metal Black. So all they did was remove it from Lost as a standard weapon and then gave it to 12-pack as a special. And I think having a standard weapon as a special attack without anything to differentiate it from the regular attack is about as killer an aspect to that weapon as you can possibly get. It's not an easy attack to use, but it's cool when you're able to lock onto people long enough to get them with the full attack. And even then, it's not a guarantee that all the missiles will hit, so it has balance, but that was also the case when it was a standard pickup. Every positive aspect of this weapon that I could possibly bring up all comes back to the fact that this is the worst and most shameless case of recycling in the series history. Orbital's Teleorb in Twisted Metal 4 was so close to being a great weapon, but it makes one fatal mistake. You see, you fire it off, and it sucks your opponents in, but not so aggressively that it's hard to get away. And then at the end of it, it explodes and freezes everyone within range, leaving them open. So it has the makings of a pretty decent special attack. It has spectacle, it's pretty easy to use, but also pretty simple to get out of, and it has a similar build to a lot of iconic special attacks, but it's still distinct enough. So what's the issue here? It does almost no damage. Honestly, I've been going back and forth on this a couple of times because I'm not even sure if it does any damage at all. I'm just hedging my bets, but it's entirely possible that what little damage is dealt is from external sources. Like if the different characters are using their machine guns on each other while they're stuck in this attack. I get that an attack like this obviously needs to deal a limited amount of damage because it does suck people in and freezes them at the end, but by making this deal almost no damage whatsoever, it's basically useless. Let me ask you a question. What is the point of a special attack? An auto-regenerating attack that you can always rely upon even when you're running low or are out of other weapons. But if it doesn't deal, like, any damage at all or deals very little, you can't rely on it. Freezing enemies can help you get away, but that's it. I mean, if barely anything happens before the explosion, then what's the point of even holding them there for as long as this attack does? So I think the Tele Orb can slot itself all the way down here for that reason. If it dealt just a little bit more damage, it would have increased its stock tenfold. You know, there are certain instances in the series where you have a special attack that's so bad I ended up having to section them off from entries that they would have been grouped with. I already did this with Firestarter having a terrible flamethrower attack, and now I'm doing it with Darkseid's Power Ram in Twisted Metal Black. Because in Twisted Metal Black, Darkseid's Power Ram is not only bad, it's a liability in certain instances. It's already awkward to use because you need to basically be facing someone head-on before using it, and it's very easy for someone to dodge, though it does decent damage. But then it gets bad in levels with ledges where you can fall off, such as the abandoned skyscrapers level. Literally almost every time Darkseid has been involved in this level, Darkseid will fall into the abyss when using the Power Ram. I've done it, the CPU's done it, it's happened a lot. So it downgrades an already mediocre version of a decent attack into the dregs. If they just had it to where falling off a ledge didn't instantly kill you, this would have gone up several notches. So you want to know why Spectre's Ghost Missile doesn't really work in Twisted Metal Black? 
So here's the idea. As soon as an enemy is highlighted in red, you fire off the ghost missile and it will be a guaranteed hit no matter what's between you and the enemy. Except no, because despite having the ability to go through the ground and even walls, some world-based items in this game are deemed solid enough objects that even the ghost missile can't clip through them, such as the other cars on the road. So in certain levels, it's a 50-50 shot if the ghost missile will even reach your target, or if it'll come into contact with something that the game deems a solid enough object that it will cause the ghost missile to go off. Something that has never been an issue before and hasn't been an issue since. So they really dropped the ball with the ghost missile in Twisted Metal Black. I'm not too fond of the whole attack being a guaranteed hit thing, but I also want the game to follow its own rules. And in that respect, Spectre's Ghost Missile in Twisted Metal Black is a low damage missile where the aspects that balance it are hindered by the game itself. Maybe I'm being too harsh, because this weapon is fine on other levels, and to be fair, even with these drawbacks, it's still verging on passable, but I still can't not dock points for a weapon that only works as intended some of the time. Which is only the case for a few weapons in the series. I don't know, you be the judge. Hey look, it's a flamethrower, but not a flamethrower. Goggle Eyes' Green Tox attack is literally identical to a flamethrower in use, including lighting people on fire, except the attack is green. Which at least visually identifies this as an attack associated with Goggle Eyes, but this is also one of those flamethrower attacks that are an inherent liability because they're short range. And if you happen to bump into anybody who's on fire, you will also catch fire. So despite not being a flamethrower, this attack has the potential to backfire, meaning that the special attack of Goggle Eyes is a wash from the beginning. Plus, it has the issue of being a blatant retexture of a better attack. I mean, at least it does decent damage. Also, this attack projects so many textures onto the screen, it kills the game's frame rate. Once again, maybe I'm being too harsh because this is just a worse version of an existing weapon. I don't know, lack of originality and not being as useful as the weapon it's copying off of is a deadly combination in my opinion. Once again, you be the judge. I promise this game does have good special attacks, it's just that the bottom 25% or so is pretty rough. I find the easiest way to gauge the usefulness of a derivative attack like a flamethrower is to examine how much damage you can do with one single charge locked onto an enemy for its entire duration. I got enough of a sample size to know that unfortunately Warthog's flamethrower in Twisted Metal Black and Lost is one of the lesser flamethrowers in the series. It has a very short duration and doesn't do nearly enough damage as it probably should. Mr. Grimm, for example, should not be tanking the full force of a flamethrower and only losing like one-fifth of his health. Especially considering how hard the flamethrower can be to use and how short range it is. I've heard it said before that flamethrowers in games come in one of two modes. Stupidly overpowered or stupidly weak. And in this case, it is indeed stupidly weak for what it should be. So just when I thought I was done recording all the special attacks in Twisted Metal 4, I remembered, oh right, you can create your own custom characters in this game. And you have four separate special attacks that you can choose from. Balls. Easily the worst is the Funny Bomb. It does really good damage, but it has the same quality as Roadkill's special attack in Twisted Metal 3, where it arcs in a very specific way and can only be fired a very specific distance away from you making the application slightly awkward because it's hard to know exactly when to use it. Though at least it doesn't auto-track, so it is slightly easier to use. And even while the explosions do good damage, they're not quite big enough for people to get directly hit a lot of the time. That's a universal issue with Twisted Metal 4, is that the hitboxes on explosions are smaller than they feel like they should be. So if ever there was a reason to use another custom character special attack, that is it. Man, trying to rank the 2012 special attacks continue to be a pain in the ass considering they're mostly somewhere between painfully mediocre and basically okay. As a matter of fact, I think from this point forward, we've graduated from the truly bad special attacks to attacks that are about 15 different varieties of mediocrity. So trying to sort through the list at this point is going to be a complete sh**. 
toss. I think Roadkill and Darkseid's drop mines more than most border on useless. It's the special attack you can use by highlighting the special attack slot and pressing down on the D-pad. This normally fires your attack backwards, but like, you only drop a few mines, they're easy to dodge, and they don't do much damage. It makes me wonder why they even bothered giving multiple characters a tertiary special attack to begin with, especially when they're the same attack. I mean, theoretically, the regular special attack couldn't be fired backwards in these two characters' cases, but then who bloody well cares? Just don't have a backwards special attack in these cases. But at least you do have the other attacks, so you don't need to use the drop mines. There are multiple chain guns in Twisted Metal 2012, and they are essentially the same thing. A forward-facing Gatling gun that does chip damage, but really only does a small amount of damage even if you get every shot off. So it's less worth it than a lot of other weapons, even from the same game, and you can take a shot every time I say this, it has no identifiable imagery associated with the cars they belong to. It's a sad state when you have to recycle identical special attacks from the same game, especially when those special attacks have the same functionality as your standard machine guns. But with that said, they probably shouldn't have given every vehicle at least two special attacks. The Mimic attack is a good idea, but it's taken down a few pegs for one reason. It's a unique attack that only works once because there's no way to differentiate the ability to copy other people's special attacks, which means that it being used for two separate characters in Small Brawl is what makes it place a lot lower than it would have otherwise. This, of course, being the special ability for both Piecemeal and Mime. Whenever you select the special, you'll copy the special attack of whoever is closest to you at that moment. Having two characters use it ironically eliminates whatever identity a Mimic attack could have had. And even then, it probably wouldn't have placed all that high because by its very nature, there's really nothing that can make this attack or ability stand out. Making it really hard to place, but at least it thematically fits with Mime, so it would have placed higher if it were just used by them. But this is probably the most malleable of all the entries on the list. So Magnetic Projectile is a very bland name for a very bland attack belonging to Roadboat in TM2012. You fire it off and it hits somebody doing relatively mediocre damage. It's easy to use and if it locks onto someone, it's an almost guaranteed hit. But it has no identifiable imagery. Nothing more to it than that, unfortunately. I have no strong feelings at all regarding this attack. It's as painfully mediocre as painfully mediocre gets. Darkseid's 50 caliber tri-gun in Twisted Metal 2012 is an auto-targeting turret that does a decent amount of damage. I also have no strong feelings about this attack. It's kind of boring in premise, and in practice, it does a middling amount of damage as far as the game it's part of, and it takes no skill to use. It's kind of a set-and-forget attack that I really have no great way to explain. It's the attack of all time. Vermin's main special attack in Twisted Metal 2012 reaches the unbridled heights of painfully mediocre. It's nothing more than a homing missile that does decent damage. It requires no extra input from you, which makes it infinity billion times better than the piloted rat rocket, but that still only makes it like a 4 or a 5 out of 10. The actual attack is very basic and extremely derivative. I could go on explaining this weapon, but then I'd also be explaining a hundred other weapons. It's strange how there are several vehicles in Twisted Metal 2012 that have designated drop mine special attacks, and of all of them, Juggernaut is certainly one of them. Both sides of the chassis open up, and you can fire mines at whatever unsuspecting fool is nearby. It's not a bad attack, but it's very bland in application, and such a mediocre way to damage people considering that the Juggernaut is possibly the biggest vehicle in the series, and you could probably damage these people more than the mines could by accident just by running into them. Microblast is a bit of an unfortunate case. 
you know, beyond the name. Because his attack, the Gatlinger, is actually a good idea in theory. He's a small character, so he rapid fires small missiles at you that do a small amount of damage. But you're also meant to nail upwards of 30 of them into your opponents at any given time, so it balances out in that regard. It's kind of like the speedy missiles. Uncannily so, in fact. One might even say they copied the programming of the attack into the Gatlinger. Obviously, though, it does more damage per missile, but at the same time, it's not a unique concept, and furthermore, given that you're supposed to rapid-fire these into your opponents and the hitbox is small and therefore they're hard to hit, they don't respawn nearly fast enough. They respawn faster than any other character's special attacks, but it takes like three minutes to get back to the maximum ammo making the Gatlinger kind of a tough sell if you ask me. If you're gonna have weapons do this low damage and fire this rapidly, they should replenish much faster than they do here. So the Gatlinger is unfortunately a lower tier weapon as a result of all the shortcomings. Oh god, that was a pun, I apologize. So in Twisted Metal Black, Yellow Jacket makes its triumphant return and has a special attack that is good in theory, kind of conflicting in practice. The attack, called Stingers, fires an 8-way missile out of Yellow Jacket's chassis. Problem being, though, that you so rarely will be encountered by enough people to make this attack hit multiple people. The best it can usually do is hit somebody at a 45 degree angle from you, which is not a bad idea at all. But the thing you're gonna get the most use out of is the aspect wherein if you directly ram into another car, the stingers will fire automatically and do way more damage. That's a good idea to make the attack more worth it in the moment to moment gameplay and give it a more skillful application. But I kept noticing my specials going missing, and as it turns out, once again, the NPC vehicles are considered interchangeable enough with enemy vehicles that if you ram into an NPC vehicle, your stingers will fire off, really hindering the usefulness of the attack. Like, really? I can just lose my special attack without having any control over it? It's not even good enough in its own right that losing it would be for balance purposes, they just decided that on-road vehicles counted as vehicles. What a load of balls. So for that reason, unfortunately, I'm forced to place the stingers this low. In levels where there are no NPC cars, it's much more useful. Then in that regard, it would probably gain an extra 10 slots at least. And in Twisted Metal Lost, the ramming feature is removed altogether, so there's that. I don't know, the usefulness will vary from level to level, but if you're playing through the main mode, you're going to encounter NPC vehicles whether you like it or not. So I can't rank it all that high if it's a weapon that's only useful sometimes. Incendiary Shockwave. It belongs to Crimson Fury in TM2012 and is essentially a copy of the Supernova Shockwave or the Crowd Clearing Attack or whatever you want to call Axel's special today. Except it's incendiary and you can charge it up for extra range and also lights people on fire maybe. It only does upwards of 20 damage though, so it's not really worth it. I'm not sure if the incendiary damage is notable enough to make it a worthwhile attack, but to me I put Kamikaze's very similar derivative attack higher. Mostly because he has the more useful of these charged shockwave attacks. It's so strange to me that both Kamikaze and Crimson Fury are essentially the same vehicle, right down to having the same primary special attack. That being a standard flamethrower, which is one of the weaker flamethrowers in the series. It doesn't run the risk of setting the user on fire like the weakest flamethrowers, and apparently it has the potential to do upwards of 120 damage, but I've never actually seen it do that much. Plus, they're still pretty short range, much like many of the other flamethrowers in the series. I really don't know what to say other than that, so, uh, moving on. So Shadow's Death Coffin in 2012 is essentially identical to the Soul Shadow attack, which will be discussed momentarily. Except instead of being some sort of exploding soul from the great beyond, it's a guy in a coffin rigged with explosives. Which really does sell Twisted Metal 2012 as being a more grounded version of Twisted Metal in certain respects, but in my opinion, if there's one thing about Twisted Metal that should never be grounded, it's the action itself. 
Either way, this attack's great gimmick is that the longer it travels, the more damage it does, which is a bit counterintuitive because to make an attack travel a long way, you have to have the foresight about where the characters are going to be in 15 seconds before they're there. Which isn't about skill, that's just pure dumb luck. Either way, I'm not over the moon about this attack. It really could have been better, especially given what it was based off of. So Quattro's microwave attack places this low for one reason more than any, and it's the fact that it's a blatant recycling of Axel's supernova shockwave attack, but slightly visually different, and that's basically it. The trouble with this list is determining what recycled archetypes get lumped together and which get sectioned off into their own category, but in my defense, it's basically taken on a case-by-case -case basis. I feel like there are certain archetypes like a flamethrower or triple missiles which are simple enough archetypes that you can't really rip them off. They can be associated with multiple different characters, whereas I feel there are unique attacks that are so attached to certain characters' identities that giving it to someone else is inherently blasphemous. And slightly altering the visual style of the supernova shockwave and giving it to someone else? That's blasphemous. It's a decent, if unremarkable, attack, but can't escape from the rather large shadow of Axel, especially because, you know, Axel is in this exact same game. Oh, the game's driving physics are so light, I got tossed by using my own special. Again. So yet another custom character special attack, this time, the laser. It's funny because this attack would be cool if it weren't a short-ranged recycling of RC Car's special attack, and as I will talk about when I get to that, it's strange how this is an archetype we really haven't gotten much in the series, but unfortunately, because this is a less useful copy-paste of another attack, it can go near the bin. Not quite in it, though. So Junkyard Dog's taxi detonation attack in 2012 works like this. You launch a taxi in whatever direction, and you can choose to detonate it whenever, which can do pretty sick damage, but it's a very familiar archetype that you've seen a million times and will see a million more. Launch something, then detonate it. And even then, it doesn't stand above the rest, given that it has a more mundane feel than some of the other similar archetypes of this kind. Trust me when I say there are good Twisted Metal 2012 specials as well, it's just that there are so many specials in that game that the entire list is clogged with them. Roadboat's Mega Magnet is one of those attacks that's fun to use, horribly obnoxious to be hit with. You suck an opponent into your grill and you can fire them off for massive damage, and you can even throw them off a ledge if there are any nearby. Making this attack somewhat overpowered in certain levels, but when an NPC grabs you with this attack, it is about as obnoxious as it gets, because you're basically powerless to get out of the attack for at least a few seconds. So in my opinion, any attack that is this obnoxious to get caught with counterbalances the amount of fun it is to hit somebody with it. At least it's unique, and I'll take subpar unique over painful mediocrity any day. Okay, so Spectre's special attack is almost always the same, and I would only really classify the attack in Twisted Metal Black as different because of its general quality. All the other versions of this attack are basically identical to use. It's gone by many names, but I like the name Phantom Burst from the first game. The traditional special attack for Spectre in its various incarnations is a bit of a mixed bag. It's an attack that usually travels in an arcane pattern and can fly through walls and usually doesn't do much damage, but it can catch you off guard and be the difference maker. In the first game, I found that it had laser accuracy when fired against me, but had a 50-50 shot of missing when I was using it. But then in the other games it appeared in, it usually didn't travel in such a crazy pattern and had a higher likelihood of hitting the target. In Twisted Metal 3 and Head On, it's almost entirely straightforward, to the point that I was honestly considering sectioning off those versions of the attack into its own entry, but they're still the same idea. 
It's not a bad attack, but I feel the traditionally low damage is meant to compensate for the fact that it can go through walls and can home in on enemies from pretty far away, but I never thought the damage was high enough to counterbalance the shortcomings of this weapon. And that's universally true for the Phantom Burst, the Ghost Missile, or whatever it's referred to as otherwise. But it's iconic, it's identifiable, and it does have some usefulness. So I think this weapon is... okay, on balance. Molotov Cocktails is the special attack for Yellow Jacket in the very first game, and much like Darkseid and Crimson Fury having very similar special attacks, the Molotov Cocktail is basically a less powerful version of Sweet Tooth's special attack in the same game, except you get more of them, and they deal significantly less damage, which I'm of two minds about. On one hand, getting more of them is nice, so even if they are hard to land, you're never too far away from having another one, but on the other hand, they do so little damage that I find them to be pretty useless. I consider Sweet Tooth's special attack to be the true attack in this vein, and the Molotov Cocktails to be the slightly lame knockoff. I wish they would have come up with more unique ideas for attacks in this game, and Yellow Jacket deserved better. But once again, it was the first game, so I give them some allowances on that. Shock Freeze is definitely the more useful of the Super Shockwave attacks in Twisted Metal 2012. Because this one, much like the Incendiary Shockwave, only does 20 damage, but it also temporarily disables all your opponents, which makes it pretty useful for getting a momentary advantage. Although, why is this an attack that belongs to Kamikaze over another character is a mystery to me. It doesn't have anything that could specifically associate itself with Kamikaze. But with that said, I have no issues with the attack as it is. The low damage compensates for the momentary advantage it gives you. So it's perfectly fine. Also, I yearn for the moment where I finally run out of special attacks from Twisted Metal 2012. Let me tell you guys something. So when I make videos like this, Every now and again, while I'm rearranging the document because I'm rearranging the ranking, sometimes I will delete an entry and then forget to paste it back into the document. And in this case, it was Meatwagon's Gurney Bomb. Could it have happened to a more... okay weapon? Meatwagon's Gurney Bomb in Twisted Metal 2012 is a perfectly decent attack. You fire off a gurney that's filled with explosives, and it also auto-tracks to a reasonable degree to a nearby opponent. The archetype is relatively familiar, but this is one of the few attacks in Twisted Metal 2012 that has actual identifiable imagery with the car it's associated with. So I think that this attack is pretty by the numbers, but at least it has decent imagery and is relatively useful. I'm trying to find a unique way to wrap this up, but I've probably used up all my closing statements for mediocre weapons. Crimson Fury's Reticle Pulse Blast, aside from having a really awesome name, is basically a more powerful version of Crimson Fury's Crimson Blade from the first game. It's not a homing attack necessarily, but it does target people within your reticle and does a decent amount of damage. Unfortunately, it still doesn't do quite enough damage to justify itself, much like its predecessor. Even if you upgrade it, all that does is allow you to shoot multiple beams at the same time. But it's still at least better than the attack that it's based on, if nothing Nothing else. I guess the idea of the custom character special attacks is that they're not supposed to be overly useful for want of not overshadowing the main character's attacks. The idea of the detonate ball is as simple as it gets. You fire off this bomb and you can choose when to detonate it, but it's so quick that half the time it hits the enemy or a wall before I have a chance to detonate it, so I might accidentally fire a second one. But that's not necessarily a flaw, because if it's quick, that means enemies don't have time to get out of the way. It's a perfectly fine attack. The explosion is a little bit too small even for a game where the explosion hitboxes are universally too small, but the Detno Ball gets the job done as well as you could hope for when it comes to a special attack for a custom character. Radical Death Coffin, or as it's written here, Radical Death Coffin is Shadow's secondary special in Twisted Metal 2012. 
And I'm of two minds about it. On one hand, it does more base damage than the regular Death Coffin, but at the same time, you have to aim it using this really fiddly manual aiming mode, which thankfully you can do mid-combat, unlike the RPG. But it's almost worth it not to bother specifically aiming, and just trying to line up an enemy to the point in which the reticle happens to be pointing to, but either way, it does pretty good damage, and made for some pretty spectacular deaths. I definitely place it above the regular Death Coffin, but not by a substantial margin. It still has some of the drawbacks of the regular Death Coffin, especially the very mundane look. I miss the razzle-dazzle of Twisted Metal's past. Oh yes, Pit Viper, a character who I am confident in saying certainly existed. Of course, her lone appearance came in the very first game, and so her special was never going to place particularly high. It's one of the more noteworthy specials in the first game in that it has a unique presentation. She fires what looks like some sort of ball of slime directly forward, which does decent damage and knocks your opponents into the air. The attack is accompanied by a very interesting squelching sound effect. So Lord knows what they were going for here. It's decent as far as the first game's specials are concerned, and also has a decently large hitbox, making it a bit on the easier side to hit with when it comes to special attacks that don't auto-track, but it really doesn't have the production value in presentation to leave a lasting impact as far as the rest of the series is concerned. It's basic, yet functional, and audio-visually is distinct for the game it's part of, making it a pretty bland, but useful special attack. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna have to do something unprecedented here, because Warthog in Twisted Metal 2012 is only accessible if you get a gold medal in every single event in story mode on the hardest difficulty. I tried everything to get an alternate save file working, short of actually properly unlocking Warthog, because quite frankly, I don't think in a million years I could 100% this game on the hardest difficulty, and even if I did that, it would take many hours which I don't have. So I'm gonna be borrowing someone else's footage for this entry, I do apologize. So Warthog's Super Crush is basically what it sounds like. He rolls over you with his tank treads. Basic attack, similar archetype especially when compared to Warthog's usual special attack, but it does pretty significant damage and is a more zhuzhed up version of an attack that many people are familiar with, so for all intents and purposes it's a pretty decent attack, if slightly basic. So in head-on, ATV's upgraded special isn't just an upgraded version of the shotgun, instead he grabs a stick of dynamite out of his butt and he launches it a counterintuitively long way. Dude has an arm like a cannon. It only does 29 damage, which still puts it on the relative average to high side of the attack damage for the game, but it's still not quite high enough to justify ATV's exceptionally low health. But with that said, it can track people relentlessly. At one point I threw it, and like 10 seconds later I got the indication that somebody was hit. Like, what the hell? So clearly it's a very determined attack. It's still a very average attack, and could have balanced out quite well, assuming they balanced out ATV as a character better, but no such luck. So, for an attack called Grenade Launcher, you'd think there would be a lot more grenades. The summary is that Outlaw in 2012 has a mounted gunner attack similar to the attack from Black, say that five times drunk, but where if you keep pressing the fire button, you can also launch grenades, which is a fun little addendum, but the indicator that lets you know you can do this is so tiny it's kind of easy to miss. It pales in comparison to the alternate attack that Outlaw can do in 2012, more on that in a minute, and also it's a very basic concept. Nothing against it, it's fun to use, but conceptually is pretty bland. Junkyard Dog's Taxi Toss Attack, say that five times drunk, wait, I, I, I already did that bit, in 2012 is a combination of the Sinner Attack and the Spiked Catapult Attack, both from Black. Essentially, what you do is you launch a taxi, hell for leather, at an enemy, and it pretty much auto-tracks to them, which looks pretty absurd. There's nothing about this attack that I haven't already said. It's not a bad attack by any means, but it's a similar attack to other attacks, just without the larger-than-life aspects. It's definitely not something that's a game-changer that would make you pick Junkyard Dog over another character. Or vehicle, as the case may be in 2012.
Despite being the star of the series, Sweet Tooth has had some pretty crappy special attacks. The flaming head attack in Twisted Metal 3 may have been a step in the right direction, but a shaky step. You fire off the flaming head and then detonate it when you wish, but there are two problems. One, the actual figurehead of Sweet Tooth's truck sometimes gets in the way of the attack, making it hard to gauge distance at times. Then two, it just moves too goddamn quick. The space of time that you have between landing the shot and overshooting the shot is a fraction of a second. It's pretty devastating if it does hit, but it's still a bit obnoxious. It has the potential to be a truly great Sweet Tooth special attack, but they missed the shot. Much like me missing the shot a lot of the time. So I guess they really didn't have time to program an attack specifically to Minion in the first game, so as a result, they just decided to give him every special attack in the game simultaneously. I guess it works for him as the final boss, but it puts a dampener on the ability to have an iconic attack when it's not one, but all. If you see what I mean. Granted, I feel like this could have easily been a really annoying attack, but considering I have never really had trouble beating Minion in the first game, methinks that the attack is at least somewhat balanced. I mean, yeah, it does a lot of damage, but it's also the final boss, so you want it to be overpowered, but not too overpowered. And I never felt that it crossed the Tropic of BS that something like Henchmen crosses. So it's definitely a weaker attack for its lack of originality, but I never had an issue with it, and to be entirely honest, it's actually pretty fun to use, if nothing else, just for the novelty. Now, before anybody says anything, I tried using multiple codes on GameShark to play as Minion, but every code made the game monumentally crap out, but I did find a code that allowed you to access Minion's special, which is good enough for me. The Frozen Treat attack in Small Brawl is one of those attacks where there was obviously an intention behind it, but I'm kind of questioning whether or not it succeeds. Because it's supposed to be a popsicle that acts like a ricochet attack, but it looks for all the world like a bar of soap, and in all honesty, a bar of soap would have made more sense sliding around the ground and bouncing off walls and whatnot. And when you have a level of visual indistinctiveness like that, it makes it hard for an attack like this to have a level of iconography. Plus, the attack is essentially identical to the ricochet attack, just with the added feature of having an auto track bounce when it hits the walls. Like, it'll hit a wall and then bounce off in the direction of the nearest enemy. Apparently, I never even noticed. It's not an unuseful attack, but it definitely needed more than it had. Visual indistinction and being functionally a more powerful version of another item shot for shot. Sorry, this attack won't get its flowers. The only reason it's not further down the list is it does decent damage, and they do have a new take on the classic clown laugh. There's no info on what Primeval's special attack is called in Twisted Metal 3. It's basically been given the name Primeval by default. This is the special attack of the final boss, which is only accessible to players via several manipulations of a cheat engine. What is it? Well, it's essentially a combination of Mr. Grimm's special attack and Roadkill's special attack, except the Mr. Grimm's skull is a homing skull, so it's much more user-friendly, but it's too overpowered. It's fine for a final boss to use, given that it's the type of thing you're supposed to avoid at all costs, but using it as the player, I can take most enemies out in one or two shots. Plus, it's also blatantly a combination of two other attacks already in the game, so it lacks originality. I guess that's a side effect of the game being rushed, but I don't see that as an excuse in the grand overall scope in the series. Primeval's attack may not be the worst special attack in the series, but it's not the best either. The only reason it's above Minion's all attack is because at least by making the skull homing, they put in a little bit of effort, if nothing else. Moon Buggy's Quasars in Twisted Metal 4 is a case where the actual functional attack can be a bit annoying to get hit with because it sucks you in and holds you, much like the henchman attack, but at the same time it's also much more forgiving because it doesn't do as much damage, it doesn't auto-track as relentlessly as they follow you but not all that far, and it doesn't do half the things that the henchman attack does, making it much better balanced. It's a little annoying to have it used against you, but it doesn't make you its bitch. so when I used it against other people and have that moment of satisfying domination, I'm not struck with PTSD of having it used on me. It's still a bit annoying, but manageable, which is why I still place it a bit low. 
plus it's visually identifiable and pretty spectacular color-wise. Not bad. Unfortunately, No Face, or Crazy 8, or whatever you want to call him, has a special attack that is derivative of one of the best special attacks in the history of the series. Spoilers. But at least it's not bad. Field Surge is what it's called, and it's much like the Omni Taser most associated with Outlaw. He unleashes an electrical attack that locks onto one and only one person, dealing damage. The range is kind of short, but it does decent enough damage. The archetype is already associated with a different character though, so I can only place it so high. I was agonizing a bit over whether or not I should have included this with the Omni Taser, but I eventually opted not to, because the Omni Taser is so closely associated with another character. But it's an extremely grey area, much like a lot of these attacks as a matter of fact. It's what makes this list so hard to compile. Hammerhead's Monster Crush is a bit of a tough one to rate because it's been extremely useful and pretty shaky. This special is the most basic concept of them all. You ram into an opposing vehicle and your giant ass tires do a certain amount of damage. In the first game, this was downright overpowered, but the damage has varied heavily because in the second game, they nerfed Hammerhead very heavily. So I don't know where to put this. I guess by default it goes somewhere in the middle if only because of pure inconsistency, but not such vast inconsistency that I would have to separate them. Now, I'm only grouping instances of Monster Crush where you roll over or ram people. There is another version of Monster Crush which is much more consistently useful, and we'll be discussing that momentarily. So Junkyard Dog pulled a similar but not identical gambit to 12-pack, having his attack be what is functionally the same as an attack that was already introduced, because the spiked catapult is essentially the same idea as the oil can. You launch it into the air, then when the time is right, you hit the fire button a second time to make it drop on a dime, detonating it on whatever sad sack happens to be in the near vicinity. It's strange, because this is also the game where the oil can was introduced, so if you had one but not the other, the one that remains would have been seen as pretty unique, so it's kind of odd that they decided to recycle concepts from the very game that they introduced them. Where have I heard that before? So you immediately disassociated yourself with having unique iconography, as at a pinch there's nothing to differentiate the oil can and the spiked catapult. So that does take it down a few pegs. With that being said, the imagery is pretty metal. It's easy to use and does good damage, so I can't place it all that low. If it just had a more unique application, it would have been a top tier weapon. So earlier we discussed the Power Ram in black, however in its other four instances, Small Brawl 2012 Head On and also Hammerhead Stomp Attack from the third game, which is literally the exact same thing, this attack is actually pretty useful. Once again, it's a pretty basic concept, which is why no character can claim ownership of it, hence why I'm including Hammerhead in this discussion, but generally speaking, you can control the vehicles enough to make this attack work for you, and these are the vehicles that have bigger hitboxes for the games they're part of, so it gives you the advantage somewhat, but it still takes some skill to use, though it's definitely worth the effort. I think that Power Ram is a swell attack that I don't mind using, as long as I'm using them in these games. And oh boy, isn't it funny that in this specific instance, Twisted Metal Black is worse than 3. Wrap your head around that one. The Monster Crush attack in Small Brawl and Head On is different to the normal one. In Small Brawl it has a different visual style. These massive spikes grow out of your tires when you activate the attack, and instead of the attack being an organic attack that doesn't even look out of the ordinary unless you know how to use the special attack, you instead magnetize to a car and grind the crap out of them, which looks really cool. Then in Head On, you don't have the spikes, but you do have this booster on the back of your car, and you boost forward and mount cars in a very similar way to Small Brawl. This is one of the best examples of making a lesser concept work. Something that looks basic and has varied in usefulness, and make it do decent damage as well as be instantly recognizable. 
I guess the most damning thing about this attack is that there really isn't much skill to its application. You drive near a person and automatically magnetize to them. The ideal specials are the ones that are powerful, but where they take skill to use. This really doesn't take skill. So be it, though. Captain Grimm's Dread Cannon in Twisted Metal 4 is decently useful and respawns enough to make it worthwhile, but if you ask me, I feel like it's too nondescript for what it is. It's a single cannonball being fired in the least spectacular way possible. Pirates in fiction are the kings of flamboyance, so the really minimalist nature of this attack takes it down quite a few pegs for me. It's useful for what it is even though it only fires in a straight line, but definitely is one of the lesser attacks of its kind. Should have been more. Meatwagon's piloted Gurney Bomb in 2012 is identical to the regular Gurney Bomb except that it does more damage and you can pilot it by yourself. You may think that gives it the same faults as the piloted Rat Rocket, but that's not the case because in this case you're only dealing with left and right instead of the extra third dimension so it's a lot easier to hit people with it. It still leaves you open to attack, but that's more acceptable if the risk is more worth the gain compared to the other similar archetypes. Plus, it has all the same positive qualities of the regular Gurney Bomb, so I give this attack my stamp of approval. Goodness gracious, Great Balls of Fire. I could not get through the entry without saying that. This is a case where you have a fire attack from Thumper that's not the usual fire attack, at least not until you upgrade it. She launches several balls of flame that act similar to Sweet Tooth's Napalm Cone. It's a departure, but a welcome departure because it keeps the usual archetypes that Thumper usually works with, but is enough of its own thing that it can stand alone. It doesn't do a hell of a lot of damage, so we can only place it so high, at least in its base form, but it manages to be a similar but distinct entity in the lineage of Thumper's fire-based attacks. Of all the custom character weapons in Twisted Metal 4, the Twin Torchers, which sounds like Twin Torture, are probably the most useful. You fire two missiles that home in pretty relentlessly and don't do too much damage, but also light your opponent on fire, which will do more damage long term. Plus, you don't have to touch them, which means, guess what? You don't have to take any damage from accidentally lighting yourself on fire. As far as ease of use and balance, this is probably the best weapon of all the custom characters, but the best of the custom character unfortunately still only places towards the middle of the list due to the inherent shortcomings of belonging to faceless, nameless characters that you can play as. So I was agonizing a bit over whether or not I could lump together the flamethrower attacks of both Cousin Eddie and Tower Tooth in Twisted Metal head-on, because obviously they're both unlockable bosses, but <laughs> look at them. One of them is slightly more impressive than the other. But Twisted Metal head-on displays the amount of damage you do, and after looking at the data, I found that Cousin Eddie could reliably get damage in the 20s, and Tower Tooth's flamethrower usually topped out at around 30. Which makes sense, because Cousin Eddie can be played in much more open environments, and Tower Tooth can only be played in a much more intimate environment. So the flamethrower will likely be in contact with an enemy during its entire duration. Meaning they both likely top out around 30. Plus, they both automatically target the nearest enemy, so despite being on different levels of boss status, the flamethrower in this game seems to have been copy-pasted. And in that respect, it's a perfectly okay weapon. Given that you can quantifiably understand the amount of damage you're dealing both in a numerical sense as well as in a general sense with the health bars, the damage this weapon does is fairly healthy for what it is. I got nothing more to say about it. Moving on. So Shadow's main attack in Twisted Metal Black is the same special attack as most of its other appearances, but Shadow also has a secondary special attack called Raven Gunner, where if you hit up on the D-pad three times, Raven will then pop out of the car in sort of a hover seat, which is absurd but never mind, then she'll shoot out of a mounted gun for a second before popping back in. 
This is very similar to the mounted gun attack that Outlaw uses in the same game, but it has a much shorter duration and does more damage per second. So you have to be much more opportunistic to use it. I think it's a bit weak that they copy-pasted another person's attack and just truncated it. But at the same time, it's not like this is the main attack, and you need to know how to activate it before even activating it. Plus, for as short as it is, and for as hard as it is to use to its full potential, when you do, it does a hell of a lot of damage. So I can't be too harsh on it, but I still feel relatively disposed to giving Raven Gunner a lower rank for its lack of originality and for the fact that it's a bit tonally off for the character it's associated with. It makes sense for Outlaw to use a mounted gunner, but this whole thing just seems a bit weird for Raven, especially because she's in high school, so the idea of giving a teenager a... never mind. You know, it's funny how by Twisted Metal 4 you had a couple dozen special attacks, but not one of them was just a standard, straightforward, long beam of light laser beam. Well, thankfully, that was corrected in Twisted Metal 4 with RC Car, who fires an actual frickin' laser beam out of a giant... thing that's on top of it. It's a decent attack, but you need to be lined up perfectly in order to use it, which I guess is the aspect used to balance it. But it's hard to say whether or not it does enough damage to justify its slightly awkward usage. Especially because Twisted Metal 4 is still using the same engine as 3, and therefore the movement is quite chaotic. But it fires in a straight line that hits its maximum length instantly, so at least you know exactly how to use it. Still strange how we don't get enough attacks like this, considering how inherently cool it is. And that's the thing that elevates this attack. It does decent damage, it's relatively easy to use, and it's just plain cool. I was agonizing a bit over whether or not I should rank all the special attacks where you grab someone and do something horrible to them under the same umbrella, or if I should somehow differentiate them based on certain factors. But then I realized it would be easier to rank them all together because there's just not enough differentiating factors to make each attack get its own unique spot. Although there is one special attack that does sort of operate like these that is different enough to have its own ranking. So without further ado, the grab and slam attacks all encompassed within this ranking include... <coughs> Mr. Slam in Twisted Metal 2 and Head On, Trash Man Crusher and Super Slam from Twisted Metal 4, then Dark Tooth, also from Head On. There's definitely going to be some subtle nuances to how each of these attacks operate, their miles per gallon damage output and overall iconic status, but I never claimed to be consistent or professional, so I'm lumping them all together because they essentially operate the same. It's a basic grab and slam attack, but they're always useful, especially when they let you fire extra attacks into your opponents during the grapple. You can even drop them off ledges in some instances, but otherwise it's a good, often used, but slightly basic attack. On the other hand, you also have the ever-present question of what happens to a grab and slam attack if you miss. Should the attack be powerful enough that nothing needs to happen, so there's a risk-reward factor, or should there be a little bit of aftershock to make the attack slightly more worth it if you do miss? Well, Small Brawl answers this question by having it to where if you miss Slam's grab attack, the arm of your vehicle will slam into the ground, creating a shockwave, making it a slightly more useful version of the regular grab attack, which has no such additional quality. When I saw Warthog's second special in Twisted Metal 2012 called Crowd Controller, I assumed it was going to be another version of Axel's special attack, but it is different. He raises up his treads and smashes into the ground, causing a shockwave, which is a pretty interesting idea. It manages to be similar to other attacks, but also extremely distinct, especially in keeping with the idea that you're driving around on giant tank treads. So smashing people like this is kind of a natural extension of those abilities. So I give it a thumbs up, but it's also incredibly weak compared to the Super Crush attack, balanced out by the fact that you can hit multiple people at once. But keep in mind, I'm still judging this entry based on how it looks on an objective level, so take my opinion on this specific vehicle with a grain of salt. Now, I'm gonna spoil this right now because I knew from the moment that I had the idea to make this list, none of Sweet Tooth's specials were going to place at the top of the list. 
And why is that? Because Sweet Tooth has never had a consistent special. Like, the laughing ghost attack from 2012 is a tough one to place. On one hand, it's instantly iconic and is extremely useful. But on the other hand, it could have been a lot better because it's a little too useful. It does really good damage and auto tracks pretty relentlessly and can even clip through walls, which means it's useful if you're using it, but when it gets used on you, it can be a little bit obnoxious. With how much damage it does, it really should take more skill to use. Even though I will continue to use this attack, I have to place it a little bit lower for its lack of balance, but it definitely makes up for it in other aspects. Like, seriously, look at this thing. You can tell from a million miles away, that is a sweet tooth attack. Death Warrant's Zoomy Rockets, or Zoomy Missiles, or whatever you want to call it, attack in 2012 is not something that's necessarily self-explanatory. But once you understand it, it's pretty useful and relatively good as far as damage dealt. You have to charge up the weapon meter twice before unleashing hell on your opponents. It doesn't do as much damage as some other weapons that do similar things, and is yet another bland missile that even partially rips off the concept from previous games, but at least it's useful. The ghost attack that Spectre uses in Small Brawl is kinda funny, because he fires three auto-tracking ghost missiles, as in they're actually ghosts, but they have absolutely no animation. It looks absurd, and not absurd in a way that ghosts should look. So I gotta dock some points for lack of production value, otherwise it's a pretty useful attack that stays within the visual identity of Spectre. But it could've definitely used some extra pizzazz to put it over the top, or at least put it, you know further into the middle. They will auto-track and circle your opponents like vultures, which is a nice touch, but it needed something more. At this point, we're basically in the chunk of attacks that are good, but with one single asterisk. In the case of Flower Power's Flower of Power, it has everything that could go into a worthwhile attack. Good damage, instantly identifiable iconography, and has balance. The only thing that's missing is a unique application. It's basically just an attack that operates like any number of missile weapons. You fire it in front of you and not much else. There's very little finesse with its usage, and so it's a case where it was one small step from being a pretty much perfect weapon but it has everything you need out of a special attack for it to be useful, so it has nothing to complain about as is. It's just about what's missing. So Outlaw's Blood Missiles is essentially just an addendum to his chain gun grenade launcher attack. He still fires off regular chain gun ammo, but you can also fire blood missiles much in the same way that you do for the grenade launcher by continuing to press the fire button during the attack. So despite this attack being called Blood Missiles, it really should have had a name that involved the chain gun as well. But either way, this is an attack that can do significant damage. The only limitation being that this version of the chain gun attack is limited to a 180 degree radius instead of the 360 degree radius that the grenade launcher attack had. But it's more than a reasonable trade-off considering that you're rarely going to be firing at anybody anywhere but in front of you somewhere. I got nothing else substantial to say about this attack. It's pretty good, and actually fits with Outlaw thematically, so it's pretty good, especially for a 2012 attack. Mr. Grimm's special attack in Small Brawl is probably the most notable example of Mr. Grimm getting away from the usual soul shooting attack. Instead, he shoots two flaming jack-o'-lanterns back to back. I really have nothing interesting to say about this attack. It's perfectly functional, it fits with the character of Mr. Grimm in the game, what with him being obsessed with Halloween, and it does the job damage-wise. It's easy to use, it's not overpowered, it checks all the boxes it needs to. I have nothing but bland things to say. <laughs> Leap and Slam is Grasshopper's special attack in Twisted Metal 2 and Head On. Probably the most unique attack in either of those games, if there's anybody within targeting range, her boosters will launch her into the air and slam her into whatever enemy is being targeted. The only difference between games is that Head On gives you an indicator on who you're targeting. It's pretty interesting, but a little bit too automated for my tastes. 
I feel like this attack would have worked better if it were to have worked like a remote explosive. You know, where you press the button once to launch her into the air, and then press it again to slam her into the ground, creating a shockwave for massive damage, like the inverse of the oil can. Points for uniqueness, absolutely, and launching yourself into opponents creates an instantly memorable visual where you have an iconic projectile, and that projectile is you. But there's no skill to using this attack, so this attack is good, but could have been more. Strangely, there are multiple vehicles in Twisted Metal 2012 that have similar attacks with identical names. In this case, Road Kills Blood Missiles, which also has the same name shared by an attack that Outlaw has, but in this case, the Blood Missiles are activated in the same way as Death Warrant's Zoomy Missiles. But Road Kills Blood Missiles are much more useful than the Zoomies, however it has to be, considering it takes three separate inputs to maximize the power. You have to time two button presses in the red zone of a meter, and then power it up with a third and final input, which takes a bit of effort, especially in the heat of battle. But once you get it down, you can do seriously heavy damage. So it's another case of an attack that takes a bit of skill to pull off. However, with that said, it does once again come back to the fact that these attacks in Twisted Metal 2012 are pretty basic presentation-wise, in that they're mostly standard missile weapons, even regardless of the application. So it's missing a bit of unique identity that would push it to the next level, but it's still a good attack. Shadow's special attack in Small Brawl is kind of funny because it's an attack that has absolutely no animation. It's a still model that chases after people which has never not looked absurd. That's probably the worst aspect about it, is that there's very little razzle-dazzle, but it's a useful attack. Essentially, the Reaper auto-tracks to a certain extent to whoever is in its direct line of sight when fired. Then you press the fire button again to detonate the Reaper. I didn't actually realize this was a detonator weapon at first. It's funny because it does automatically explode when it comes into contact with an enemy, but it needs to be an absolute direct hit. Which led to some frustration at first, but once I figured it out, it was an easy enough adjustment, and the weapon itself is pretty good. It just needed more visual flair to put it over the top. Anybody who knows anything about Talon from Twisted Metal 2012 knows that it is easily the most distinctive vehicle in the entire history of the series, and that's for one reason and one reason only. It's a playable flying vehicle, a helicopter, making it a bit of a pain in the ass to fight in normal scenarios, which is why it's probably banned in most households who played this game. But still, it's a neat idea that made for some interesting gameplay in the story mode, and it has a couple of fun special attacks, the lesser of which is the Trigunner attack. You essentially go into a first-person mode and fire away at whatever unsuspecting goons are below you. It feels like a bit of an interruption to gameplay in that you're going into a completely different superfluous gameplay mode, but at the same time, it's unlike any other attack in the entire series. So it's a fun idea, executed well, doesn't get in the way too much, and is very uniquely identifiable with Talon. Trapper's attack in Small Brawl is surprisingly not as overpowered as you may think, despite the fact that he's a boss. It's a special attack that's perfectly reasonable both when you're facing him and when you're using the character. The only thing that makes it slightly unreasonable when you're facing Trapper is the fact that he has a lot of health, but I digress. Essentially, you fire a single monkey, which then multiplies to a maximum of 8, I think. So it's a bit hard to dodge, but it doesn't do too much damage. It's a unique attack, you don't see many weapons actively multiply themselves, plus it's tonally in sync with Trapper as a character. So it's an attack that checks pretty much all the boxes it needs to check. The only thing that holds it back is its lack of iconic status, given the fact that it, as well as the character that uses it, only appears once. But it's basically as good as it needs to be, and as good as it can be. So, Pizza Boy's special attack in Twisted Metal 4 simply called Blades. Could have called it something like Flying Pizza, or something mildly more creative. Either way, he fires two separate circular saws at you, which home in on the nearest enemy and do decent damage. No complaints here, you got something that's at least visually tangentially related to the character, and while it has similar application to a lot of other attacks, at least it has visual distinction. 
Basically, it checks all the boxes. Although, since he is Pizza Boy and these aren't pizzas, I am obligated to play this clip. That's not a pizza. That's not a pizza at all! In Twisted Metal 3, they took away Thumper's iconic flamethrower attack and gave it to Firestarter. And you all know what I think about that attack. So that left Thumper out in the cold somewhat, meaning they designed a new attack for him called Sonic Blast, which sounds like a Sonic the Hedgehog game. I'd say Thumper got out better, as his attack has no chance of backfiring and doing damage to himself. It blasts a sonic shockwave outward in a V-shaped pattern that does pretty substantial damage and also throws enemies backwards. Matter of fact, if you freeze someone before using this attack on them, they will go flying. It's not exactly surprising given how floaty the engine is for Twisted Metal 3, but it's still pretty useful. Functionally similar to a flamethrower with none of the drawbacks. It gets my stamp of approval. So Tower Tooth has a secondary attack that you can use if you drop into yellow health where you unleash a giant lightning storm. And while it's overpowered, balanced out by its slow recharge time, that's kind of the point given that Tower Tooth is supposed to be a novelty. Considering you can only play as him in a single level, but it still makes me feel like a big boy. I like using it, but there's no doubt in my mind that it is essentially included as nothing more than a reward for somebody who has played enough of this game to get to this point. So it's neat, but it can only play so high, seeing as you can't use it in normal gameplay. But the novelty is neat, and using it really is fun. You know the absolute worst part about categorizing the attacks on this list that are basically good? Try to find unique ways to say basically the same thing over and over. Crimson Fury's Flaming Paper Airplane Attack in Small Brawl is basically good. Crimson Fury fires a couple of Flaming Paper Airplanes and they home in on whatever is directly in your line of sight. Self-explanatory, familiar, useful, tonally on the wavelength for this game, though maybe not for Crimson Fury himself. I have no complaints, but it's also not something that I'm over the moon about. Next. Okay, so Sweet Tooth has had multiple attacks called Napalm Cone, but there's a very distinct difference between the Napalm Cone in the first game versus the rest of the series. Mainly that the Napalm Cone in the first game is just a forward shooting projectile with no real advantage, so once again it lacks the spectacle to put it over the top. But it does do a really good amount of damage, balanced out by the fact that much like the Power Missile, it doesn't have any auto-tracking capabilities whatsoever, and you can only carry two at any given time, making it a bit tough to land, although it does have a much bigger hitbox than some other special weapons from this game. If you do hit it though, it's definitely worth it. Plus, it's also accompanied by that iconic clown laugh that can instantly identify Sweet Tooth. <laughs> It's definitely on the upper tier for the game it's part of, and while it doesn't have the flamboyance of later games, I can't help but give it extra points just for pure iconic status. This was the first attack of the main character for the entire series. Axel's spiked war wheel attack in Twisted Metal 2012 is a lot like the encasement rage from Black, except significantly more useful. You automatically roll over people doing heavy damage. You can roll over multiple people in one go, and it lasts not an unreasonable amount of time. So personally, I actually think that Axel's war wheel is pretty good. It takes the concept of compressing yourself and using the giant wheel to crush people and makes it into a solid attack that's almost more worthwhile than the default crowd clearing attack. Almost. So you know what? I actually think this is a pretty good special attack that manages to stand out amongst the crowd in 2012. Back to Talon. The secondary attack for this helicopter is the ability to pick people up and drop them hard. In some scenarios, you could probably even drop them into bodies of water or off cliffs to do extra damage, and the higher you drop them, the more damage you do. 
It's definitely balanced out by the fact that you can only grab people out in the open, and actually catching up to some vehicles to pick them up can be difficult. But either way, this is an attack that takes a bit of skill, a bit of speed, and is fun to pull off, especially when you drop those people straight to hell. Plus, it's something that only Talon could do, making it instantly recognizable. Why do I like this and not the Mega Magnet? Good question. Meter Maid's special attack, the Energy Ray from Twisted Metal 4, looks simple in premise and visually is very similar to the Omni Taser most associated with Outlaw. But the reason why it's not lumped together with that attack, or why I'm not giving it more crap for essentially copying it, is for one reason. When Meter Maid uses it, it actually drains people's energy and gives it to her, which is incredibly useful in a pinch. You don't often get attacks that actively drain the health of other players and give it to you, making this a fairly unique addition to the series. Well, unique in application, and I think if they came up with a more visually distinct style that played into Meter Maid as a character instead of essentially recycling the Omni Taser's visuals, this could have easily been a top tier attack. What they should have done was instead of having electricity, they should have had Meter Maid turn on a vacuum that sucked out the pocket change from all the surrounding cars, and then that would convert into health. It would be simultaneously thematically fitting and hilarious. So points for uniqueness and points off for a lack of originality. But it still took the same concept and made it its own. Twisted Metal Small Brawl is an instance where they decided to not have Thumper's special attack be a flamethrower, but instead what's called Supersonic Shockwave. Essentially, they fire three sound blasts out of the car, which will then ricochet off walls and damage anything they come into contact with. The ricochet means that if you don't get people on the first go-around, you can still get them on the backswing, which makes this weapon much more useful than it would be otherwise. It does a good amount of damage, I never noticed it being too overpowered or too underpowered, so it has a good balance, and the sound wave aspect is very identifiable with this version of Thumper, which is being driven by a couple of dudes who are very big into music, so it's a good attack, I have no real complaints. When it comes to attacks that are really hard to use but are absolutely worth the effort, I think there exists no better example than Reaper's Chainsaw in Twisted Metal 2012. By default, throwing the chainsaw at someone will do decent but unremarkable damage, but if you do a wheelie, you will drag the chainsaw on the ground, which will light it on fire, and if you get a direct hit on somebody with a flaming chainsaw, it will do 150 damage. Hot. Damn. That's the type of attack that ATV needed. That's literally enough to kill some enemies in one hit. So this is probably the highest risk, reward, highest difficulty to use weapon in the series. No other weapon in the series exists at every extreme point of the spectrum in the same way that this weapon does. It's a pain in the ass to use and nearly impossible to get a direct hit with, but if you do, it's worth it. And it makes it very distinct in that sense, and makes it a very rewarding weapon to master, especially given that Reaper has a low health as well. So the entire vehicle takes more skill to use than any other vehicle in the game. The only thing that holds this weapon back is the fact that it's just a chainsaw, so it doesn't have a unique identity in the same way that so many other weapons have, but it's a damn fine example of the hard-to-master style of weapon. Okay, so Outlaw's attack in Twisted Metal Black, the mounted gunner, is a tiny bit overpowered. The attack is what it sounds like. A mounted gunner pops out from the top of the car and shoots at whatever is nearest. Now, let me be clear here, I actually really like this attack because it's the type of attack that allows you to focus on the driving and lets the computer deal with the fight. It pains me that I have to put this attack lower than I wanted, but in the object of impartiality, this is an attack that does good damage and auto tracks, making Outlaw probably the best character to start out with in Twisted Metal Black. But only because this attack skews on the unbalanced side, and part of the balance once again has to be the attack is useful but not too useful, and that it's fun to use but not frustrating to be hit with. Though I think the attack was nerfed in Twisted Metal Lost. So while I have to dock points objectively, subjectively it's easy to use and is great for beginners. So I can only place it so high, but I can also only place it so low.
You know, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I tried to find a way to access the special attacks for the final bosses in Twisted Metal 2, namely the clown ricochet bombs and the flaming headbutt. But I couldn't do it. Even while I could access Dark Tooth as a playable character via cheat engines, it either had no special or Sweet Tooth special. But that's fine, because Napalm Cone version 2 from Twisted Metal 2 and Head On is actually pretty good. Basically, what happens is Sweet Tooth fires a bouncing ball of death that auto-tracks, and it does pretty good damage, but one of the trade-offs is that you can only have a small handful of them at any given time. It doesn't make up for Sweet Tooth's drawbacks in Twisted Metal 2, unfortunately, though he's a much better character in Head On, but the attack is still solid, doing great damage, though the bouncing effect does make it possible to dodge just by staying under it. So they do everything to make this weapon have a good push and a good pull as far as usefulness. And it's all capped off with that iconic look and feel associated with Sweet Tooth. You can also charge it up if you get the upgrade in Head On, but I'm trying my best not to make note of the upgrades in Head On, because trying to parse these rankings is hard enough without including an X Factor like that. It's not the greatest attack, but I feel myself growing more fond of it every time I play these games. Let me tell you guys something. I saved writing about the flamethrowers until the very end of my list chronologically because they were the hardest ones to sort and categorize. Which flamethrowers get lumped together, which ones are more useful or less useful, where do they place in the grand scheme of the overall series? These were the questions that I was trying to answer, and these were not easy questions to answer. So here I am examining the extreme minutia of all the flamethrowers in the series. I'm going to be lumping both Drag Queen and Super Thumper from Twisted Metal 4 together in this case, because despite their flamethrower attacks looking like they should do different amounts of damage, they do pretty much the same amount of damage. A direct full force attack that stays locked onto an enemy for the full duration of the attack can drain in some cases a third to half of a health bar, which is absolutely insane. But we also have to contend with the fact that this is the same engine as the third game, and as such, you can still accidentally light yourself on fire if you use this attack, and in fact, you almost certainly will, which is a very harsh drawback to this attack, but at the very least, it's significantly more useful than it was in Twisted Metal 3, or even than it was for Goggle Eyes in this very same game. At least from my experiences. I mean, a third to half of a health bar. That's pretty good. In Twisted Metal Black and Lost, Brimstone's Sinner Special is absurd and hilarious. Basically, he fires an actual living, breathing person who will then fly across the battlefield, attach himself to another vehicle, and explode for decent damage. I can't even begin to articulate how funny that is, especially the part where he maneuvers himself mid-air like he's got a magnet attached to him, or he's secretly Superman. Nothing more to it than that. It's a funny attack, similar in application to other attacks, but it's visually distinct and thematically synchronous with Brimstone. I give it a thumbs up. It's so strange to see Axel have a completely different special attack to his classic Supernova Shockwave. It didn't have an official name, so I decided to call it Spinning Axle. The idea of Spinning Axle is that he fires a single missile forward, and as soon as it makes contact, he will spin in a circle and fire a whole bunch of missiles in random directions. It's a chaotic attack, but that's kind of why I like it. It's pure unfettered chaos that damages anybody within a certain radius of you, which makes it a pretty low-key useful attack. It's so strange in its animation, but it's almost instantly recognizable just for sheer weirdness. So I can get behind this attack somewhat, although I question why they changed such a recognizable attack to begin with, but no matter. I like Roadkill's Charger Missiles in Twisted Metal Black as well as Lost, if for no other reason than because they have a fun yet familiar gimmick to them. They're similar to the reticle attack, but also different in many ways. It's no secret that I think the best weapons are the ones that do a lot of damage but take a lot of skill to use, and the Charger Missiles are what they sound like. You have to charge them up and release them at the correct time, and if you hold onto them for too long, they'll backfire, which means you have to absolutely time your shots perfectly and and there's a lot of variables that can happen in 4 or 5 seconds as you're charging up the attack. 
or you can let it go early and release only a small volley of missiles. They take skill and timing, which makes them really satisfying to use optimally, especially when you get that super overcharged variant of the attack, which takes out like half a health bar. So the charger missiles, familiar but nuanced and fun to use. You know, I find it very amusing that there are people out there who genuinely believe in space laser conspiracies, because a space laser would be infinitely less convenient than just using a gun or a missile at a pinch. One person who disagrees is General Warthog in Twisted Metal 4 who believes the best way to deal with a problem is to shoot at it from space, hence the ion pad. The overall effect is just an AOE explosion that's activated in the same way as the remote bomb. You plant it and set it off whenever you feel the need to but it summons a giant ion space laser to blow the crap out of anybody in its wake. It's functionally very familiar, but just for the sheer spectacle and visual uniqueness of this attack, it can slot itself all the way up the list. I feel like Club Kid's Vortex attack in Twisted Metal 3 is easily a shoe in for the best special attack in that game that isn't an already pre-existing attack. Functionally, it's no different than any of the attacks that suck you in and explode, but I feel like the Vortex gets by on its visual uniqueness. It's literally like a Vortex at a rave, sucking you in with all its funky colors and all these bright lights before exploding. So it's functionally familiar, visually distinct. Plus, it's useful, especially if you manage to get multiple people stuck at once. But with that said, it's also not impossible to escape, so it checks all the right boxes, making for what is definitely my pick for the best special attack in Twisted Metal 3. That isn't lumped together with other attacks. Minion's special attack, cleverly called Minion Attack in Twisted Metal 2, is very unique in that anyone can use it. Up, down, up, up, fire. It uses up your entire power bar, but it's available. Either way, it's a combination of a freeze missile and Warthog special. Regardless of what each specific game calls it, this is Minion's special attack in Twisted Metal 2, 3, and 4. It's perfect for the type of attack where you need to save up all your energy to use it because it's powerful, but the power bar thing does balance the books. It's when you're fighting Minion and he has a near unlimited supply of these attacks that it can be slightly problematic, but I found that while I was using him the attack respawned slowly enough that I didn't feel aggressively overpowered. Plus it does have some instant recognizability given that it's a universal attack in Twisted Metal 2 but I also have to deduct some points because it's one step removed from being someone else's attack entirely, and I feel like a boss like Minion should have a more special attack than just taking someone else's special and putting a freeze missile on top of it. Uniqueness does count for a lot in these parts, unfortunately. Otherwise, its longevity, usefulness, and recognizability would easily get it to the top 5, if not top 3. <laughs> Shadow's attack in most of the series is called Soul Shadow. It started out in Twisted Metal 2, and in that case, it's a projectile weapon that you fire out in the form of a shadow outline on the ground, and when you press the fire button a second time, you detonate it, creating a massive explosion. If that sounds familiar, then yes, it is essentially the exact same thing from Small Brawl, just with a very different visual flair. This attack is definitely undisputedly Shadow, but in Twisted Metal 2 my one issue with it is having the attack be encased in a silhouette that travels along the ground makes it very easy to lose track of, especially in busier or darker environments. However, in head-on it's much more colorful and visually distinct as it is in Twisted Metal Black and Lost, although it kept backfiring on me in Lost, but I won't dock points for that because Lost is barely a game. Low-key, the Soul Shadow in its various incarnations is one of the more iconic and long-lasting attacks in the series. So while it may have been hindered in its first appearance, they did fix the issues with it over time, and it's always been a very visually distinct, useful, but not too useful attack, and unique enough to Shadow that it can consider itself a pretty iconic attack. <laughs> So, for the first time in the series since his first appearance, Twisted Metal Black gives Mr. Grimm a slightly different special attack. Not in any practical sense, they just took the usual soul-based attack and turned it into a scythe. 
The idea is still the same. It's a forward firing projectile that does a hell of a lot of damage, but it's really difficult to hit head on. As a matter of fact, I think they even decreased the size of the hitbox compared to Mr. Grimm's usual output, but even still, the damage is worth it. As a matter of fact, there was one point where I got a direct hit as well as a head on collision basically at the same time, and it took out something like half of my opponent's health bar, instantly killing them. Now that's useful, but it's also hard to use, so it balances out quite well. I still miss half the time, but every time I hit it, it's definitely worth the effort. If there's one thing synonymous with the Warthog Hog character, it's having triple missile attacks. Warthog's XQJ37 Hornets are god tier in Twisted Metal 1. He fires three missiles that semi-auto track and do a good amount of damage. Definitely useful, but unlike later games, it doesn't have the same visual flair that identifies it with the Warthog character, but starting with Twisted Metal 2, they give you this attack with a red, white, and blue flare, though the white looks a bit yellow. This carries over into the third game, Small Brawl, and Head On. Also, in Twisted Metal 4, the Joneses use a triple missile attack called the Hornets, essentially making it the same thing, including the red, white, and blue aesthetic. It's a consistently powerful attack that's usually instantly recognizable and identifiable with the character, and while being simple in concept, it's useful, not overpowered, and has good ease of use quality. It could have easily been generic, but it manages to wriggle its way into being iconic just through sheer consistency. Definitely a good one. Roadkill was the first character I played as in the very first game that really clicked with me, and that's for one reason. His special attack, the Steel Dagger. In theory, the balance of special attacks in the first game relied on whether or not weapons auto-tracked, like how the Ghost Missile will do less damage than the Napalm Cone. That's not set in stone, but in theory that's how it worked. However, the Steel Dagger only slightly auto-tracks, which is enough to take the edge off so you don't have to be uber accurate. But as a result, it's still super powerful, so it has a good ease of use, but still takes skill to use, making it the perfect weapon for people starting out. It's useful, but not too useful. Of course, it's not the least bit spectacular, it's just a steel rod and an explosion, so it can only place so high, but it checks enough boxes to earn itself a very good spot. Flaming Blaze is an attack that's really difficult to place because it's really overpowered, but it's also Minion's special attack in Twisted Metal Black, a character who you can only unlock by beating the game as every character. So this attack almost feels like a reward for beating the game so many times. Basically, you have this ultra-powerful flamethrower that will be able to track to the nearest enemy, and one single charge can kill most characters. And if there's nobody in range, you'll fire these long-ranged fireballs at the nearest enemy, which will also kill most characters within the duration of a single attack. So like, is this a good attack? Is it a bad attack? I guess I've never really had that much trouble with Minion as a boss, so getting this attack used on you isn't a death sentence as long as you know what to do, and this definitely feels like a proper reward for what it is. It feels like the final exclamation point on Twisted Metal Black, and even though it is overpowered, it's still a fun novelty. So hand to god, I can't in good conscience call this anything but a good special attack because I've had so much fun using it. Oh yes, Rob Zombie, aka Jason Momoa if somebody left him in the oven for too long. His alone appearance in this series makes for one of the better special attacks in the series. For some reason it's called Zombie, despite the fact that it's not a zombie. He launches a spinning skull that sucks in nearby competitors, shocks them, and then explodes at the end. It's kind of like Orbital's special attack, but it doesn't suck people in quite as violently, and it's infinity billion times more useful. To balance out the damage, it's somewhat easy to get out of, but if you're trapped, it's pretty devastating. It's closely associated with easily the biggest guest character in the history of the series, Mr. Zombie himself, and the application design and overall effect is relatively unique. So I'd say that this is up there as being one of the better special attacks in the series. But it is hurt by the fact that it only appears once in the series, so if you haven't played Twisted Metal 4, you may have missed it, making it lack a certain level of iconic status that would have put it over the top. <laughs> 
So I decided to lump Thumper's appearances in the first and second games together here, because in both cases, his attack, whether it's called Scorcher or the Ultra Flamethrower, either way, they fall into the stupidly overpowered end of the flamethrower spectrum. A single charge can take out something like half of even the strongest enemy's health bars. Which I feel is exactly how flamethrowers should be balanced, because if you have a super short-ranged attack, it obviously takes more skill to use, and therefore the reward should be worth the risk. And that is certainly the case when it comes to the flamethrowers in the first two games. The Boomerang Blast is probably the weapon most associated with our boy Roadkill, aka Marcus Kane, homeless vagabond, and noted schizophrenic. A boomerang weapon is not something you see too often in these games, and so it's instantly identifiable with our boy, but on top of that, it's uniquely useful. It fires in a boomerang U-shaped pattern, and if you get somebody with it on the backswing, it'll do significantly more damage. So it's the type of attack that takes a lot more skill to get the most out of it compared to your average weapon, but that makes it so much more rewarding to use to its full potential. But also, there's no obligation to not use it in its most basic form. I mean, it's not too shabby even if you aren't using it to its full potential. It checks all the boxes. It's a unique, skillful weapon that's balanced for power. It's a really solid weapon all around. And hey, the upgraded version in head-on isn't too shabby either. Explosive dump? Is that really what this attack is referred to as? No, seriously, that's what it's called on the wiki. And the manual has no info on the matter. Is this actually what it's called, or is that just an in-joke? Because I spent about 20 minutes giggling to myself after I found out that it was called Explosive Dump. Either way, Manslaughter's special attack in Black and Lost is a pretty devastating attack if you get a direct hit. Once again, something that ATV's base attack should have been modeled after. He launches a bunch of explosive rocks out of the back of his dump truck, with each rock doing a bit of damage, and if you get hit with a large amount of rocks, you better bend over and kiss your ass goodbye. It kind of has a shotgun spread, so it's the most useful at short range when you can hit somebody with all the rocks at once. Plus, you can deploy it in a rear fire style and just leave a bunch of rocks on the road for people to drive into. The drawback, of course, being that since it only fires directly in front of you, it's very easy to miss, so that balances out the damage quite well. But nothing feels better than getting a direct hit. Though since it's basically a one and done as far as the amount of times it's been used in the series, it doesn't quite have the same recognizability as some of the other attacks. Which definitely hurts it in the overall rankings, but still, it's called Explosive Dump, and we've got to unleash our inner 13-year-olds once in a while, I think. Calypso's nuclear missile in Twisted Metal 4 is a bit of a tough one to rank. The nuclear missile acts like a lot of other attacks where you launch it and then you press the attack button again to set it off. Still, it has the spectacle, it's pretty unique. I mean, there's been plenty of missiles throughout the series, but this is a straight-up nuclear missile. It's pretty iconic, and it's one of the rare special attacks that's informed by the character. Calypso is trying to take back his competition in Twisted Metal 4 to such an extent that he is willing to employ nuclear warfare. But also, this is strangely a weapon that has such a massive explosion, and yet if you're not caught directly in the middle, it does barely any damage, and the range is surprisingly woeful. But then again, that also means that it's not overpowered, but it feels like it should be more powerful, but that's a bit of a catch-22. It feels like no matter where I rank this, it won't feel like the correct ranking, but ultimately I decided to rank it on the high side on the basis of this. Despite not feeling as powerful as it should, that means it's balanced. And I feel like gameplay balance is the most important thing. Especially in a game with the henchman attack, so good job Calypso, you were playable in one game and you have a batting average of a thousand. Truly the big John stud of this Royal Rumble. There's a recurring theme in these games where the more interesting special attacks tend to be given to the characters with lower health. And I think the best example of this is definitely with Twister, a character that appears three times and all three times has the exact same special. A special that is iconic, visually distinct, character specific, and does a good amount of damage, but is also balanced with the fact that Twister almost universally has extremely low health. 
This is of course referring to the tornado spin. You activate it, and in one way or another, Twister will cause a small cyclone that will suck in and lift up anybody within a certain radius of the attack and fling them off, doing pretty substantial damage. By the description, I've probably given away the fact that this basically checks all the boxes. It has everything you want out of a special attack and manages not to go too far in any particular direction thanks to the way the games are balanced. Tornado Spin is definitely one of the greats. Sweetbot V2, as I've dubbed it, is Sweet Tooth's secondary special attack in Twisted Metal 2012. It's the type of attack where I really don't care how useful it is overall, because it is the single coolest special attack in the history of the series, and I guess they really wanted to give the big man himself something special for his signature attack in 2012. So here's what's up. He transforms into a giant attack robot. At this point, you can throw a less powerful version of the Laughing Ghost, and you can fly around and smash into the ground causing a massive shockwave, both of which uses up Turbo. You can argue about the practicality of this attack, if it's truly as useful or as balanced as it needs to be, but I don't care. This is simply the coolest thing they have ever done in the history of the series, bar none and in itself justifies the entire 2012 game in my opinion. No question, one of the best special attacks in the series. It does have a few shortcomings compared to the original sweet bot though. Mostly that it doesn't take quite as much skill to use, but well, I'm perfectly fine with that. Of all the special attacks in the Twisted Metal series, Mr. Grimm's are on average the most damaging, which makes sense because it belongs to the character with traditionally the least amount of health. So Mr. Grimm is a character that requires a bit of skill and finesse to use, but if you're able to use him, you can dominate. And his range of soul-based projectiles usually fire in a straight line and don't auto-track, so once again it's a bit hard to use but definitely worth the effort. But that's also not why this attack places this high necessarily, because these soul-based attacks are also instantly identifiable and visually distinct. Regardless of which game they're part of, you can instantly identify these attacks as belonging to Mr. Grimm, and they're usually pretty spectacular. In the first game, he fires the ghost of Gilbert Gottfried, then in 2, 3, and head on, it's harder to tell because the soul is not facing directly at the camera, but the idea is the same. It's always a highly damaging, straightforward projectile regardless of design or visual style. So it's iconic, it's identifiable with Mr. Grimm, and it's powerful, but difficult to use, so it's perfectly balanced. Definitely a great weapon if you know how to use it. Few special attacks are as instantly recognizable and iconic as Sweetbot from Twisted Metal Black and Lost twice being the special attack of both Sweet Tooth and Gold Tooth in that game. If you ever played Twisted Metal Black, chances are the first character you picked was Sweet Tooth, seeing as he's the cover star, then you loaded up his special and was absolutely gobstruck when he transformed into his robot form and fired 20 missiles back to back. This is an attack that could have very easily been very standard had it not been for the transformation, which itself bumps this up to being one of the most spectacular and iconic attacks in the series. It's also powerful, but properly balanced, because while you can do some pretty hefty damage if you hit somebody with all 20 missiles and you can even get a bonus for doing so, it's not easy as they can very easily outrun the missiles or dodge them, making it somewhat difficult to use but real satisfying to pull off properly, and that intelligent balance is what puts it above the second coming of Sweetbot for me. So basically, this attack has it all. The only thing that keeps it from the top spot is its lack of longevity only being in two games, and that's only if you count Lost. But what really counts at this point is having an attack so iconic as to be ubiquitous with the character it belongs to. When I made this list, I didn't know how most of it was going to go, but I did know two things. One, I knew that one of Darkseid's specials were going to place at the bottom of the list, which actually ended up not happening, and I knew what my top two were going to be, because there are a few special attacks that are simply so iconic that they couldn't not place at the top of the list. First of all, the Omni Taser, which is synonymous with Outlaw. Despite the different games, the fundamentals never really changed. 
It's an attack that releases an electrical surge that shocks everyone within range or just a single person depending on the game, and continues to do damage for as long as they're within that range to the extent of the attack's duration. It's an incredibly simple concept, but it's genius. And it's also easy to use and very useful. You don't need to worry about it so long as somebody is within range, but the range isn't very far in order to balance out the omnidirectional aspect. Plus, this is one of the most recurring special attacks in the entire history of the series, appearing in five different games under this form. And depending on what you count, you could even say upwards of eight games. So it is on the cusp of being a perfect twisted metal attack, but there is one more that I think edges it out in pretty much every way. I knew before anything else, Axel's Supernova Shockwave was going to be the number one best special in the entire series, bar none. Is Axel the most consistently good character in the entire series? He just might be. First of all, Supernova Shockwave is the most kick-ass of names for any attack. That is up there with Moonstrike and Blazing Dynamo as far as things from video games that if I were a wrestler, I would name my finisher after. Although it has had various different names, omitting the Supernova, omitting the Shockwave, or just simply being called Crowd Controller. Aside from that, it's an extremely balanced attack. It's easy to use in that it's a Shockwave that will damage anybody within its radius, but they keep the range in mind, so you'll rarely hit more than one character because obviously it's a guaranteed hit. They don't want to make it too easy. And it also does a good amount of damage, but doesn't do too much damage, so it is essentially perfectly balanced. It's the type of move that anybody could use, but it also doesn't necessarily give the advantage to anyone. It's easy to use and is a guaranteed hit if you're anywhere near your enemy that you're using it on, which means you don't have to divert your attention away from the driving, but it also doesn't do so much damage that the person you're fighting gets screwed over. Most importantly though, I think the Supernova Shockwave has to be commended for its longevity. Axel has appeared in every single game from Twisted Metal 2 onward. And outside of Small Brawl, the Supernova Shockwave, despite being called different things throughout the series, has always been Axel's most ubiquitous special move. So it has appeared seven times throughout the series, eight if you count Quattro's Microwave. It is potentially the most recognizable bit of imagery in the series outside of anything involving Sweet Tooth. Plus, I mean, it has always just looked insanely cool. So for its ease of use, its balance, its usefulness, its longevity, and its iconography, to me, there is no other special attack in the entire history of Twisted Metal that could have placed at the top of the list. And you can take that all the way to the bank. The Supernova Shockwave is the perfect special attack in the entire history of Twisted Metal. Full stop. Alright, and that was every Twisted Metal special attack ranked from worst to best. If I may go off the cuff for a second. Oh, Jesus Christ, what was I thinking? I've been recording for three days. My voice is shot. Oh, God. When I initially took on the challenge, I had no idea that it would be as hard as it was. In fact, uh, I would go as far as to say that this might be my most difficult list I've ever made. Certain attacks were simply impossible to categorize or rank. Some of these attacks could have moved up or down 5 to 10 entries, and I think the list would still be valid because there are a lot of attacks that are of very similar quality. But at the time I've made this video, this is what I feel the rankings were definitively. They might change over time, but it is funny though to notice well, just how many, like, mediocre to good attacks there were. There were like 10 bad attacks, 20 great attacks, and then just everything else was somewhere in the middle. I guess, you know, most of these attacks are basically just functional. But in the end, I'm glad I did this list, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, I request that you subscribe, like this video, leave a comment telling me what you think, and hit the notification icon so you're always up to date on what I'm doing, because there's still a very good chance that YouTube is not sending my videos out to all my subscribers. Let me know in the comment section what your favorite and least favorite attacks were. And if you really like what I do here, please consider pledging to my Patreon for unique perks and rewards such as early access, Discord benefits, and exclusive content along with these fine folks right here. And an extra special thank you to Billy Knot, Brooklyn, Chance Cranford, Dick Kickham, Ga004, Raf, Ty Trovey, Weird Webster, and, oh, I guess that's it, for going above and beyond.
Also, a few housekeeping tidbits to get through. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Ranger X, uh, one of my patrons, for basically taking it upon themselves to be the QA tester for this video. Seeing as it is a nearly two-hour video, there were obviously going to be a few uh, editing quirks or mistakes that slipped through the cracks, and he kind of uh, helped watch the video through and uh, vetted it to make sure that didn't happen. So thank you, Ranger X. Also, I just wanted to say, um, if my voice does sound a bit weird, I just got a new mic and I'm still kind of getting used to it, so if things sound a bit different for a little while, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. Thank you. Elsewise than that, I've been the King of Snark Style right here on Tactical Bacon Productions, and I will see you next time. Stay crispy, my friends.